Hi, I'm Big Ben, and welcome to this week's episode of Equip Tips, where we're going to be talking all about the Nikon CLS system, which stands for Creative Lighting System. So for those of you who don't own a set of Pocket Wizard yet and want to get into off-camera flash photography and own a Nikon camera, this episode's for you. Come join me. I'll show you what's going on. Nikon came out with this awesome thing called the Creative Lighting System. And what that is, is a proprietary built-in system that comes with the newer Nikon DSLR cameras that when compatible with a Nikon CLS enabled flash, we can actually use our built-in pop-up flash to communicate via infrared and optical transmissions. That's a big word. Basically, what we're saying is, is that this flash built in right here sends a bunch of signals to the flash right here without, ha without owning any pocket wizards, without having any sync cables. We have a means of using a bunch of lights in several different groups. We can actually have three or four different groups of lights that we can actually control from our camera. What's good about this is, if you're on a budget and don't have pocket wizards, you can use it. Number two is, is that I can actually control the power of my flash from my camera so I'm not actually waddling over and trying to, trying to adjust the power as if I were in a common strobus approach or you know, in, a, in a manual mode. So let's talk a little bit about the Nikon CLS system. Basically what happens is, is that when we enable the CLS system on our cameras, on our Nikon camera body, we actually can go in to our menu. So to get into our uh, Nikon CLS mode, uh, what we're going to have to do as far as the camera settings, uh, one, we're going to go into our custom settings menu, which looks like the pencil and Nikon menus. As far as this camera, which happens to be a D300, uh, we're going to go ahead to menu E, which is bracketing and flash. And the one we're looking for is flash control for built-in flash, meaning we are going to set the mode of the built-in pop-up flash to work in a commander mode, meaning we are going to command our off-camera flashes. So I'm going to go into there. You know, you got TTL mode, manual mode, repeat mode, commander mode. Someone we're looking for. So go ahead and select that. And now it's going to build, bring you into the commander menu or the Nikon CLS menu. And we are going to set our built-in flash not to manual, not to TTL, but the one with the two dash lines. That meaning that it's literally not going to be contributing to the exposure. The light coming from the built-in flash is literally just going to be talking to the off-camera flashes and telling them what to do. Now, when we're talking about uh, built, talking about our other flashes, we can categorize them into one, two, or even in some of the new cameras, three different grips. So, say like I have two different flashes and I want to control them independently. Well, I could put my key light in group A set it to one, say like I want it to go off at one fourth power, one quarter power, and then I can put my rim light, say like I have another flash behind my model and I just want that to give a nice rim light or accent light or even a hair light, I can go ahead and put that in a group B and maybe I'll turn that down to one sixteenth or one, one thirty second, you know, we'll do a, do a, you know, do play with a little bit of light ratios. So the point is with group A and group B, and in some cameras group C, the groups allow us to put different flashes in their own group so I can control them independently. So I can put as many flashes as I want in group A. I can put as many flashes as I want in group B. So as far as group A, you can turn it to TTL if you want it to make decisions for you. If you want to be a bit more controlling, you can put it in a manual mode. And once you put it in manual mode, which is M, you can go over to comp, which is the next box over, and set the power of the flash that you'd like it to be in. So I'm going to set it to a 1 8th. And what's good is about group A and group B is that we can actually put different flashes in different groups. So say like I have four flashes total. I can put two flashes in group A and two flashes in group B. And what that allows us to do is that we can control two flashes at a time by that group. 
So I want a, I want to control my first two flashes in Group A. All I have to do is change the power settings in Group A, and it's actually going to change the settings for both those flashes. If I were to go to Group B, I could change the settings for the flashes in Group B and so forth. Say like I only have two lights, right? I have my key light, which is coming like from a Nikon SB800, and then I have a rim light behind me. Well, obviously the rim light's gonna be bearable, so I don't want it to be as high as power, is my key light with the umbrella. So I could put my key light in group A, and I could put my rim light in group B, and now I can independently adjust them appropriately so they're not, so they fire where I want them to. So I could put group A, my key light, at one fourth power, and then I can use a one quarter ratio if I want, or a one half ratio, and I could put my rim light in group B and set that power setting to 1 16th or 1 32 power. And now we got those light ratios, and I'm actually controlling them from the camera. I'm not having to walk over to the flash, which is absolutely great. So that's a little bit about groups. So now that our camera is set up, we're gonna have to set up our flash. And right now I've got a Nikon SB800. I'm assuming your SB600s and 900s would be similar. I'm gonna go ahead and go into my settings here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this flash into not master mode, because that means it's gonna be commanding. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into a remote mode. So this is gonna be my key light. So now that my flash is in remote mode, I got my group selection down here, and I got this in group A. I'll have a key light in group B, and say like I want to have a group C, I could. So group A, and the other thing to pay a special importance to is the channel. And just like a radio trigger, you can select different channels that it fires on, just like a frequency on a radio, channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four. So I'm gonna have these flashes, flashes firing on channel one. In my Nikon CLS menu, where I selected my groups and my power settings, I also have it on channel one. So now that this is set up, my camera and my flash should be able to infrared talk to each other through infrared signals. So now, if I pop up my flash, exposed for my subject, whatever it might be, now my Nikon camera is capable of sending wireless information via an infrared system to communicate with this flash and fire appropriately. Now, I can adjust the power settings from my camera for each group of flashes, as long as I keep everything on the same channel. Now, the problems with Nikon CLS system, basing it that it's off of an infrared system or an optical system, is that just like the sensor on your TV when you're pointing your remote control at your TV, if you don't point it right at it or if the batteries are getting low on your TV, it won't quite work. Or say like you have your remote control from your TV and you point it at the floor and not your TV, it's not gonna work. Well, the same thing's here. Your remote control's right here on your camera, right? Your, your receiver, which is like on your TV, is built onto the front of this flash. So here's the problem. If I were to hide this flash behind a wall, or say like I'm out in the bright sunlight, if this sensor isn't able to see what's coming from the remote control or the built-in flash of our camera, it isn't gonna be able to communicate. Say like I have uh, an assistant holding my flash for me. I'm shooting a run and gun wedding or I'm shooting something where I don't have time to put it on a light stand. I've got my assistant here standing proudly holding that flash. Well, what if their finger's blocking this sensor or say like they're holding it in a position that you know it's only comfortable for them but that's being blocked. Well, with that being blocked, see, it is now not going to communicate. Or say like it's behind me. Say like I'm shooting something, a subject's in front of me, and I've got this light behind me on an umbrella. You know, it might not read it. Now with this, enough light is bouncing and spilling off the ceiling that it is hitting that optical sensor right there and making it fire. But again, if I cover up that sensor, whether it be behind a wall in someone's hand or merely in bright sunlight where the sunlight's in it so much it's not gonna see the light coming from this, you've just lost communication. So that's one of the restrictions of the Nikon CLS system. 
But what's really great about it, why I recommend it, if you're first stepping into off-camera flash photography and you're not ready to step into buying a set of radio triggers or you don't want to deal with the hassle of sync cords and you own a Nikon flash that's CLS capable as well as a Nikon DSLR that is CLS capable, go ahead and try it out and have some fun with it. Just remember, set up your pop-up flash to commander mode. Go ahead and put your flash in remote mode and go ahead and have fun with it. And what's good about this too is that I'm not walk, having to walk over and change the settings on my flash. I can literally be at my camera, not have to run around the set or the studio and control my flashes independently. So uh, one of the foremost outfitters on Nikon CLS system is Joe McNally. Uh, this guy is the flash god, we call him. He's usually running around with about two or 300 flashes strapped to his shoulders and everywhere else. And I totally recommend going and taking a look at some of his work. I know he has several uh, creative lighting system DVDs out there. So. so for those of you who own an Icon camera that's CLS capable as well as a CLS capable flash and don't have the means of getting a wireless system such as Pocket Wizards or don't want to have the hassle of using sync cords, go ahead and try out the Nikon CLS system. It's, it's, it's easy to use, you can control everything from your camera, and it's a good way to step into off-camera lighting. I'm Big Ben with this week's Equip Tips, and I bid you happy shooting.